There are so many things in Starfield that the game never tells you. Little secrets that make the game so much easier and more enjoyable that I had to share them with all of you in this video. Like how to instantly reload your weapon without using mods or skills, how to get access to an expensive penthouse suite completely for free at the start of the game, or how to start a relationship with Vasco? Captain Sexy, hello. I am satisfied. Before we get there, did you know there's a way you can reliably test your overall DPS in Starfield to compare different weapons or even different weapon mods against each other? Plus, you can do this anywhere and anytime, wherever you are. Now, I like this trick a lot because even though weapons do provide some basic damage numbers on their tooltips, those numbers don't really tell the whole story, especially when you consider stats like crit chance, critical damage, or armor penetration. But with this trick, you can easily test any weapon to your heart's desire to see how it really performs. Now, you may have noticed in Starfield that you can shoot your companions by accident, and if you were paying attention, you could see how much damage your weapon was doing at the time. But not every companion will let you do this, and some will even become hostile towards you if you do it too much. However, there is one companion in Starfield that will always let you use them for target practice all day long without consequences, and that is the adoring fan. Simply tell the AF to stand still in your desired location and fire away. In this case, I'm going to set him up in the lodge basement, in the same room as the crafting table so I can do some weapon mod testing later on. I do think this actually works with other companions as well, so feel free to experiment, but AF is definitely the most fun option in my opinion. You accidentally hit me! And with this trick, your companion will never die, but they will eventually enter a downed state, and the better your DPS is, the faster your companion will be downed. And if you're wondering, yes, there are damage numbers visible in the Starfield UI if you turn them on because those numbers are turned off by default. And to get those numbers to appear, you'll need to go into your settings, click on interface, and then make sure show damage numbers is turned on. Once you do this, your regular damage numbers will appear in white, while critical hit damage will display in red. But this trick is extremely helpful when comparing various weapon types and especially specific weapon mods. If you're testing weapon mods, you can even save your game before crafting, Test out your weapon and then revert back to the previous save to craft another mod and save all your materials before deciding on the best option for you. But now's a great time to mention today's fantastic video sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is the easiest way by far to get the most out of your internet browsing experience, keeping your online identity completely safe by encrypting all of your information and protecting your personal data from big companies and cyber criminals. With so many scams, phishing emails, and bots running rampant on the internet today, Nowhere is safe, and even YouTube frequently is flooded with things like fake giveaways and fake creator accounts so that extra layer protection is something that everybody needs. And if you ever have to use public Wi-Fi, the added layer of security a VPN provides is an absolute must-have. But a VPN can also swap the real location of your device with a new location by changing your IP address, letting you virtually travel to any country around the world and opening up potentially blocked sites or even adding new content you wouldn't normally be able to watch, like shows on some of your favorite sites, including Hulu and Netflix. I'll leave a link to Surfshark down in the description and pinned comment below, and if you click that or enter the promo code HTMDEAL, Surfshark is offering up to six additional months of service completely free for Black Friday. That's a huge deal, so big thanks again to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video, and let's get back into it. So if you want to know the best weapon for companions in Starfield, the best option both in terms of damage and cost efficiency is always going to be to give them weapons with the rarest ammo types and the highest rate of fire. In case you didn't know by now, companions only need one single round of ammunition to fire their currently equipped weapon pretty much infinitely. With this in mind, I'll often equip Sarah with the micro gun since this thing burns through those 7.77 rounds and there's no way realistically for me to keep up with that ammo cost myself. Or if you have access to it, give your companions the unique Revenant rifle and is a total beast in the hands of any companion. And if you wanna see how to get this rifle, make sure to check out our previous guide on the best hidden weapons in Starfield. I'll have a link for that in the description as well. But the best companion I've found in terms of consistent damage, if you really wanna punish your enemies without having to lift a finger yourself, is the explosive weapon specialist, Betsy Hauser. Betsy can be pretty easy to miss in your Starfield playthrough, especially as she's not a part of Constellation or any specific questline or faction. Instead, you can find her stranded on her ship in the Heinlein system, and this is found just to the right of the Parima system, which is known for Red Mile. And Betsy will ask you for some ship parts to help repair her ship, at which point you can then recruit her to join your crew. And Betsy actually has rank three in the explosive skill, so just give her an explosive weapon like a grenade launcher, 
and let her go to work. Her damage is pretty impressive. But Vasco is another extremely unique companion in Starfield as he's the only one that can actually say your character's name out loud if, that is, you choose from a list of designated names. The list of names that Vasco can pronounce is actually huge, and I'll include a link to the names Vasco can speak down below in the description, but there's literally hundreds of options. And if you want to take advantage of this feature but your name isn't on the list, don't worry, you can also change your name at any point in-game by using Enhance, which is the character customization shop, and it only costs you 500 credits. Now keep in mind that if you have a first and last name, Vasco will tend to speak just the last name if it's on his list while calling you Captain. So if your character's name is Caleb Rogers, for example, Vasco will call you Captain Rogers. But this trick is one I didn't know at first, and it definitely has some interesting roleplay options. Speaking of Vasco, he is a pretty great combat companion once you actually figure out how he works. So initially, I thought that Vasco could only use melee attacks against enemies, but that seems to be just a basic attack when he's not equipped with anything better in terms of melee weapons. However, you can actually equip Vasco with swords, knives, or even a Varun pain blade if you want, and it will change his attack from a basic punch to a slash, even with the accompanying sound effect and animation. Now, his damage also seems to increase or decrease to match that of the melee weapon he's using, though this is fairly difficult to test. However, Vasco also has a hidden ranged attack similar to the Equinox laser rifle, which he will use by default if you actually give him the right ammunition type. Simply remove Vasco's equipped weapons and give him one round of the three KV laser ammunition and watch those lasers fly. Now, if you're curious, I did try equipping him with other laser weapons, which use this same ammo type, but these didn't seem to change his ranged attack damage or his rate of fire, so I think he just has the default lasers. How cool would it be if we could actually upgrade his weapons at a crafting table, maybe even as another use for the robotic skill in Starfield? Hopefully a future expansion adds some more customization like this. But speaking of weapons, there are many unique interactions with weapons in Starfield that the game doesn't fully explain to players that are actually quite powerful. Now, I explained in my previous Starfield Secrets video, for example, that some weapons, like the Mag Sniper, actually have a charge mechanic where holding down the trigger fires a more powerful shot. But something else you might not realize is that certain weapons, which reload individual rounds, I'm talking about shotguns or even certain grenade launchers, have two possible reload functions. First, there is the standard reload, which you all probably know, which requires you to completely reload the weapon round by round and feels quite slow, especially in the heat of battle. But luckily, there is a second option here where if you started the reload process, you can pause midway through or at any round by aiming your weapon in order to switch back to firing mode. And this is honestly great for close quarters combat using the shotgun, where you never know where another enemy might rush around the corner, so keep this trick in mind. But the most overpowered reload trick in Starfield can be used on any gun in the game, and this actually lets you bypass reloading whenever you want if you set up your equipment correctly. For example, you could take the micro gun, which normally holds 300 rounds, and extend that to 600, 900, or even 1200 rounds if you really wanted to, but I find this trick works best on weapons that have a long reload time and a smaller magazine size, such as pistols or shotguns. And to set this up, all you need is multiples of the same weapon type, which you are bound to pick up from random spacers and ecliptic as you're out adventuring in Starfield. But don't ignore those weapons, as they can also provide free ammo, but if you also stack those weapons like this into your inventory quick slots, they'll actually give you free reloads by switching to the next weapon instead of reloading your current one. And the mods your weapons have or each weapon's rarity does not even matter for this trick. They just need to be the same weapon type as I've shown in this example. Just make sure to go back through your quick slots after combat is over and reload all those weapon multiples again so they're primed and ready for the next combat encounter. But for those of you who are more socially minded, this skill tree can actually give you some great advantages when it comes to persuasion and passing dialogue checks. In fact, I think a lot of these skills such as diplomacy, intimidation, and manipulation are straight up easy mode versus speech checks and are often a better choice than leveling up the persuasion skill itself. All you need to unlock these supercharged persuasion options is one rank in the social skill of your choice. Now, I personally prefer manipulation, which seems to give a ton of progress towards those persuasion checks, usually four to five points in my experience, and these are green checks, meaning they are the most easily passed compared to yellow or red. Plus, one rank of the manipulation skill can actually be gained completely for free at any level by working through the Reusion Faction missions which you can start in the City of Neon. Now, I talked about this questline in detail in my previous Starfield Secrets video, 
So check that out if you haven't already to pick up your free manipulation rank one skill and breeze your way through those future dialogue options. And if you prefer to steal your way through Starfield, our next secret is definitely for you because did you know that wearing the right outfit often changes the status of items in a specific location from being stolen to being free to pick up? Now there are several locations where this can happen in the game and it's usually related to a specific faction. For example, if you wear any of the UC uniforms while visiting the UC Vanguard, you can pick up any weapon, ammo, or item that you want and it won't be considered stealing. Plus, these uniforms look pretty sick, and they also give you some nice combat bonuses as well, so that's a win-win in my book. But our next tip I mentioned at the start of the video, and this has to do with gaining access to one of the game's expensive penthouse suites completely for free. So for those of you that want to live that luxurious space lifestyle, but don't quite have the credits stored up yet, this will be a good option to give you a taste of that rich life. Now the penthouse in question for this trick is the Sky Suite located in Neon, which normally costs a whopping 230,000 credits or so. But as I said, you can gain full access to the suite as early as you want, completely for free if you don't mind a little breaking and entering. Simply head to the Ebside District in Neon and use your boost pack to get on top of some of the buildings above the city center. From here, you'll want to make your way to the base of the penthouse and then jumping up on the pipes, you'll be able to then jump out and then boost pack in right onto the penthouse balcony, which surprisingly is not even locked. And once inside, you can make yourself at home and even open the decorating menu to start furnishing the apartment in your own personal style. Now, the only downside to this is you will need to jetpack in every time you want to return. But if you do decide to purchase the suite eventually, you'll then get full access to the elevator entrance. Plus, all of your decorations will remain just as you left them from your previous squatting experience. And a bonus tip here, don't forget that you can cycle through variations of each decoration type in Starfield to find some pretty interesting things for your home. If, for example, did you know that you can actually find Skyrim in Starfield? It's right here on my wall. And if you want to pay that penthouse off early, then one of the best credit farms you can use at any level in Starfield can also be found in the City of Neon. Using this method, you can get 15 to 20,000 credits every minute quite easily. And for this secret, you need to head first to the Neon Core District and find the security office where you can then locate this cell in the back, which contains a contraband cache. Now, usually you'll find eight to 10 contraband items just sitting here. And if you crouch behind the chest, you can usually steal them without being seen. Then just casually head over to the Trade Authority located nearby to sell your stolen contraband items for pure profit or buy any ammo or supplies that you might need as well. The great thing about this secret, however, is that the contraband cache is also easy to reset if you simply wait enough hours. Now, the best method to reset the cache that I've found is to head to the planet Venus in our very own solar system, which has a one hour local time to 100 hour universal time ratio. Meaning that if you rest for just 24 hours on Venus, you've actually spent 2,400 hours there in universal time. That's 100 days. Now, every time I've done this and fast traveled back to Neon to check the contraband cache, it's always been reset with more contraband loot. Meaning I can steal that contraband again and sell it again just by traveling to Venus, resting for one day, and then fast traveling back. I am curious though if there is a shorter rest time that will also reset the chest. If anyone knows for sure, make sure to drop a comment down below for the rest of us. Or if you know any other big Starfield secrets that I missed, make sure to let us know those down in the comment section as well. And before you leave, make sure to check out our last video on the best hidden weapons in Starfield, many of which I featured in this video, and I will see you there.